wars and these awful stories that we hear even in Longmont or whatever that have nothing to do with me personally. But it does, because I don't hear them. Why do certain people hear about these stories all the time? It's because they're so tempted to turn on the television. I'm not saying this is you. I'm just saying in general. Why do they turn on the television? Because there's beliefs in them that are interested in the nastiness that's going on. Or they're not conscious and enjoying their own life enough to not turn on the television or to not watch the news or read the newspaper. It's a reflection of your own degree of excitement with your own life. If it's not very high, if you're not very connected, then any form of entertainment will do. In other words, whatever happens out there is extremely personal. And there is no difference, not really. In, and this works in a variety of ways. One, the most obvious one being that if negative news reaches you and, and is interpreted in a negative way and experienced as a bad thing, then what you'll show up next, what will show up next is more of the bad news. Because how do you respond to the bad news with this is really bad? Creation goes, okay, one second, let me create a new war over here. Send a shitty news reporter over there, connect it to your television. Hey, what do you think of that? What do you think of that war that I just started for you? Thank you so much for calling the previous one bad so I could reinforce that by starting yet another war. All the, uh, all the while, the person behind the television is being absolutely arrogant, not understanding that they continue to feed the negativity by feeling so selfless that they complain about how bad the world is, judging those that don't see it as bad at all. Uh, again, not saying at all this is you. I'm just like taking this picture to the extreme and saying what I often see in people out there, especially those that don't come to my meetings, is that they feel so good about them. So this is how low their excitement in their life is, okay? That they feel the most exciting thing for them is to feel really, really good about themselves, complaining about how bad the world is and blaming happy people for being happy. If this is you, when we are excited, we're actually adding to a creation on a global scale that is excited. This is a law of the universe. If you're not happy, you're not helping. So check in. doesn't matter how many kids you feed in Africa. doesn't matter if you fed 10,000 kids. If you were unhappy all the time doing it, you were a destructive force. You did not help one bit except in the negative direction. If you fed 10,000 kids in Africa single-handedly, but you fed, felt bad and projected that they were suffering with every single moment, not seeing the goodness in life. You have not helped one bit. In fact, the second half of those 10,000 kids, the latter 5,000, have been your creation. They would not be starving if you were not unhappy with the first 5,000 kids you were feeding. This is how creation works. Take responsibility. If you want to be selfless, you need to shine. I know it's a paradox. Humanity does not agree. So what? They don't know what they're doing. Humanity has not a clue of how this works. You've got to be happy. If you're not happy, you're not helping. It's a law of the universe. If you're not happy, you're not ha helping. You're helping, but in a negative direction, which is fine. You can do that. It's still expanding upon the universe, but we've done that for millennia collectively as a global species. Now it's time to change our perspective so that what we see can actually change. But what we see can't change if we don't first change our perspective. So if you're rooted in there's so much misery out there, there's so much war out there, let me help out. It may seem like the most selfless thing to do, but it's more selfless to sit your ass down, turn off the television, and visualize what it feels like to already have an amazing planet right here, right now, being born inside of your chest. Now you're helping. Does that make sense? Physical help is only goes so far. And I'm not saying not to physically help out and not to physically feed kids in Africa and not to physically whatever. That's all beautiful. But the extension of it, it has to be an extension of your joy and your benign perspective of the holistic value of life. And if you can bring that energy to the physical help, then it's a complete cycle and you'll actually be able to notice opportunities that will actually collectively on a very large scale complete collective shifts. Instead of continue to create the negative thing that you're feeding, literally and figuratively. So it does work on a global level, the same as it works on a personal level. It just requires more personal levels to do the same thing.
to understand the same thing. But again, more personal levels will understand this, the more you as a personal level understand this and are an example of this. And then very rapidly there's going to be this threshold, this tipping point, and in a way, in many ways we've already crossed this tipping point. But, you know, every addition to the momentum in the upward spiraling energy is a very helpful one. And there's many thresholds that we're passing, passing, passing. As soon as there's a certain amount of beings that are part of a collective agreement that shift their understanding of the collective agreement, the collective agreement will have to reflect will have to reflect this. If only one personal being in a very powerful way has very clearly eliminated all lack in their belief system, then they will start to live in a bubble reality that is, in a way, to an extent, detached from the collective agreements that the collective around them suffers from, is an unconscious victim of, and it will generate a universe where things work differently, even while seemingly being still inside this world with those other people that work in the old way. And that's why one can say, hey, wow, your life moves really fast, or I can't believe how happy you are at this funeral, or you start to really generate. The more clearly aligned you are with yourself, the more individuated your bubble experience of this collective becomes, and the more of a shiny example it becomes to those that can either match or not match your frequency, your example your light, your brightness. Does that make sense? Now, this bubble reality will start to attract other beings that also have that higher degree of frequency and understanding and alignment with how a source, how consciousness sees things. And so, boom, they will, boom, boom, like water droplets being attracted to each other, turning into a bigger reality, until it is the entirety of our civilization. So you've turned your personal bubble that was detached from the collective agreements into the new collective before you know it, at least into a sub-collective. But that can expand and expand into a total collective, and eventually it will, even if not everyone chooses to go along with that, they will form their own sub-collective, you will form your own sub-collective, and these frequencies will depart so far from each other that at some point you won't be able to hear, see, perceive, or experience each other ever again. So your experience will be that the whole civilization has joined you in your revolution, in your understanding. It's not necessarily true. It's simply that others have split up in other sub-collectives that you no longer have the ability per to perceive. So from your, from your point of view, you're on Earth with an enlightened civilization. And there's others that are on Earth with a destructed, destroyed civilization. Every choice is a valid one. Have each being choose for themselves. And the only way you can teach them is by being an example. By living it. 